Hey there. How are you? Well, it's okay. I promise you that today is going to be very easy for you. Very non-intimidating, okay? But I'll, get, I'll give you a chance to get settled and just adapt into being here. I understand. Being, just being in a hospital, in a doctor's office, it's a lot to take in, so we're gonna go at your pace, okay? Really quickly, just to get started, and my name is Dr. Cranio, by the way, sometimes I forget to mention that. <laughs> really quickly, though, can we just verify the spelling of your first and last name? Perfect. And how about, can you also verify for me your date of birth? And is this your first time seeing a neurologist? Okay. Well, it's gonna be a little bit different than maybe some experiences that you've had in the past before, okay? I am gonna be doing some of a hands-on exam and I will be doing some extensive inspection and testing of your eyes, but a lot of this is actually more, well, I guess just a series of tests, okay? Some of them are going to be interesting, maybe strange, and some of them are probably going to be a bit boring, right? But we just got to get through them, okay? Okay. So, alright. Looks like you're here today because you're having some confusion, difficulty understanding language, and possible auditory deficits. And your audiology exam was inconclusive, okay? And you were referred here by your audiologist. All right. Interesting. How long has this been going on? Okay. Interesting. You're actually the second person she sent me due to this issue. And, okay. Have you had any recent head trauma? Any head bumps? Okay. How about any headaches? Dizziness? Okay, and we know confusion. How about any fainting spells? Okay. History of migraine? And how frequently? I'm sorry to hear that. Okay. Any history of high or low blood pressure? How about asthma? Okay. Any drinking or illicit drug use? How many drinks would you say you have on average in a week? And, all right, let me just take a look here at your previous surgeries. Your medication list. All right. beginning of our exam here, we're going to be doing the more hands-on kind of stuff, okay? Which means I need to ask the question, is it okay if I touch you? I know, but it's important that we always have consent. So, alright. Just taking a look at you first. You have beautiful eyes, by the way. Gorgeous color.
just gonna stand up so I can get a nice view of the top of her head. Changes in skull shape. Look at the ears here. I'm actually going to take a look inside your ears. Start on this side over here, and you're gonna feel me just ever so gently here, pulling your ear back so I can get a nice clear view. Okay. Any discomfort? Any pain? Yes, that would also be classified as discomfort. Sometimes we need to be more specific. Okay, so there is a tiny bit of redness in the ear, which could be just indicative of maybe you recently I'm not seeing any kind of drainage or any fluid or anything in the ear that would be concerning to me. And it looks like your ear canal is a nice and normal shape. Alright, so then let's take a look at the other side. Any pain or okay? So the side looks good too, nice and clean. Not seeing any kind of redness or inflammation on this side, no irritated skin. tympanic membrane, not seeing any kind of sign of perforation or anything. Okay. This all looks really good. So.
Well, I have my light out and this light to check your airway. So if you can just open your mouth. Perfect. And I'm just gonna take a look with my light. So now we're going to get into the neurological side of things, okay? So first things first is I have my light here, and I just want you to look right ahead, right in between my eyebrows, okay? I'm keeping your head square, okay? I don't want you turning your head at all. My light right here, I'm gonna make a path through this area, and I want you to follow it just using your eyes, okay? Now I have two lights, okay? Red and white. Now what I want you to do is tell me which light is closer, okay? okay. And again, I want you just focusing right here, right in between my eyebrows. And we're gonna start.
So, how are you with colors? Okay. Can you tell me what this color is? And this one? And are they different or the same? Alright. So, similar test, okay? I have this light right here. I'm going to hold it just like so. And I want you to tell me when my light is closer, okay? So, when it gets to this point, I want you to let me know, okay? Okay, so. Good. Good. thing when it gets close. Good. 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 And up here. So then, we have a very similar kind of thing where we're still dealing with depth perception, okay? So, on my ruler here, I have point A and point B. Which one is closer? Alright, good. How about point A or point B? A or point B. Excellent. All right. Point A, point B, and point B, and point A. Okay. So now we're going to change the direction, which is going to make this just a little bit more complicated, okay? So which is closer? Point A, point B. And point A, point B, point A, point B, A, B. Okay, A, B. Very good. One more time in this direction. Okay, only this time I want you to cover one side. Perfect. Okay, so point A, point B, and point A, point B. Good. And then let's cover the other side. Yeah, that one can be open. So, A, B, and A, B. Alright. I'll keep that handy. So then we're gonna do something called blink to threat. Where it's gonna look like I'm gonna poke you in the eye. I promise you I'm not gonna poke you in the eye. But it's gonna look like it and it needs to because I wanna make sure that you are blinking at the appropriate time, okay? So, are you ready? Good. Good.
All right. And doing great with that. So now we're going to move on from depth perception into auditory perception. This is going to be where it gets kind of different, I guess. So move that. So. My notebook here, as well as my wheel. So what's going to happen is I'm going to be moving my wheel across the cardboard in the back, just like so, okay? And what I want you to do is point with your finger where you hear the sound of my wheel, alright? And I want you to follow it as best as you can. Okay, so we're going to start and I'm going to start right here in the corner. Excellent. Good. Good. Step. So, now what I'm going to have you do is close your eyes. Not yet though, okay? I have two tongue depressors and I'm going to slide them along each other on each side of your head so you can hear it and both of your ears, okay? I want you to tell me when you hear this guy go down and back up, okay? Okay, close your eyes, right? No peeking, because that's gonna, well, make it so our results don't mean a whole lot. Okay, close. Okay. One more time. Excellent. All right. So, while I have my tongue depressors, there's going to be one more test we're going to do, okay? 
So, keeping your eyes closed, you're going to hear me very lightly tapping, and I want you to tell me when you hear it gets closer, okay? Alright, so close your eyes, keep them closed. And tell me which side you hear. Okay. Good. All right. open. And again, I want you to focus right here, okay, right in between my eyes. And I want you to tell me how many fingers you see me hold up, okay? Okay. Now we're going to do something very similar to that, still looking right here, but I want you to raise your hand when you see the number three. It could be this, it can also be this, right? It's a little complicated, but I promise you, you'll adapt, okay? So, staring right here, all right? I almost struck myself there. Good. All right. drawing a series of patterns, okay? So first, can 
you tell me what shape should be next? Very good. Alright. So now... Very good. Okay. Now we're going to do one that is a bit more complicated. Yep. I did write 12, so that way we're kind of able to have some sort of direction here. So can you point to me, just pointing at the hour hand, okay, where you would find 3 o'clock? Okay, and how about 7? Good, okay. And how about 4? Just right around there. And nine. Okay. And how about one o'clock? Okay, yep. And how about five? And eleven? Okay, this one focuses on coronation, proprioception, as well as testing the trigeminal nerve, which is making sure that you can feel different spots on your face. Right. Okay, so the first thing I want you to do is touch my finger. Yep. Yep. Good. Good. Excellent. All right. Okay. And excuse me. I have my cotton ball here, and I just need you to close your eyes for me again. All right. Perfect. Okay. I want you to tell me where you feel it. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. Keeping your eyes closed. I'm gonna blow a puff of air on each side, and I want you to tell me which side you feel it, alright? Okay. Good. 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 Excellent, okay. And the last test here is called the extinction test, okay? So you're gonna feel me squeezing you, and I want you to tell me when you feel me let go, right? And which side. Keeping your eyes closed, okay? No peeking. Good job. Good. Good. Excellent. You can open your eyes now. quickly. So, I am not able to replicate your symptoms on exam, and all of your testing done, you did a great job. It's completely negative for any kind of deficits or issues, so...
So what I'm going to do really quickly here is fill out an order so we can get a CT scan of your brain, okay? So that way, maybe if there is something going on, we'll be able to take a look. So, okay. We will get that sent over so that way when you go down to radiology, they are ready for you and know exactly what to do. I'm also going to be contacting a colleague of mine. They are also practicing out of this clinic, so you only have to come back here, okay? And I'm going to have them also examine you and see if maybe their set of eyes can see something that I'm not, or their set of testing can come up with an answer that mine, unfortunately, is not able to. Alright? I always think that getting a second opinion can be really helpful, because we all have our own personal perspectives that we see our patients through, and it can vary sometimes someone's set of eyes or set of testing can be more effective for one patient than another. Not always the case, but with things like this, it can be really helpful. So, do you have any questions for me? Okay, well that's fine. If you think of anything, you are more than welcome to give me a call and I'm not available, I will give you a call back by the end of the same business day, unless you call after hours. We do have an answering service who will send a message via, via fax, or if it's an emergency, I can also be paged as well, okay? Okay. So, I'm gonna go give this order to my medical assistant so they can get it faxed over to radiology for you, all right? And ideally, I'd like you to have this done today, if possible. Obviously, if it doesn't work with your schedule, it doesn't work with your schedule. But the faster we get our imaging, the faster we can get you some potential answers. And I'll also have your imaging forwarded to your primary care doctor and the physician I'm going to refer you to for that second opinion, okay? same building. Our front desk girls can point you where to go. Alright, we'll make sure you get there. Okay, well, it was really nice to meet you, and we'll talk very soon.